Hello, fourth grade. Today we're going to invest some time um, working on the D major scale on your violins and also your cellos. And um, this is the D major scale. The D major scale has two sharps, F sharp and C sharp. Why do we need to know the D major scale? Well, many of the melodies that we sing in class and we study this year, including Ode to Joy. Many of the, the melodies that we learn, and uh, including Ode to Joy by Beethoven, the Ninth Symphony, the melody from that um, amazing piece, are derived from that scale. So a uh, scale is just simply a ladder, a building block, a series of notes in a certain order of half steps and whole steps that um, allow you to create these beautiful melodies. There are many different types of scales, uh, but we'll study that another day. The D major scale is the happy scale, and on, on the violin, we know that it is going to require two strings, the D, which is the second largest string, and also the A string, which is the second smallest string. So once again, it's D and A. Now, you'll notice these lovely colored frets the Don't Fret sticker that is on my violin. You'll notice them. And they are there to assist you uh, to play the correct note and relatively, hopefully, in tune since the violin fingerboard does not have any frets. So this sticker does a wonderful job of superimposing those frets. So I can just call out colors and strings and fingers and hopefully get you playing this beautiful scale. So what you need to do is first of all, like I said, start out on the D and take your first finger, put it on the yellow fret on the D string, and make a little fist, not too tight, but just a little, little grip so we can push the string all the way to the fingerboard. Once you have carefully put it right on the yellow, then go ahead and pluck the string. That is the note E. The next note in the scale is F sharp. I'm putting my second finger on the red fret while keeping my first finger on the yellow. Very important detail. Don't lift up on your first finger. Keep it right there. Now you have yellow and red and you're plucking the note F sharp on the D string. Then we add our ring finger to the blue fret while keeping the other two fingers intact. This gives us the mighty note known as G. It sounds like this. Okay. So far we've done Do or D, Re or E, me, or also known as F sharp in this instance, and so, do, re, mi, fa, so, which is G or blue. Do, re, mi, fa, what did I just say, so? All right, it's been a long day. It's do, re, mi, fa, because so is coming up here on the A string. This is our fifth degree, and it is the A string. So, so far you've noticed we've gone open, yellow, red, blue, and now we're using the same pattern on the A string. Open, then yellow, which is B, red, which is C sharp, and blue, which is D. So it's open, yellow, red, blue, 
open yellow, red, blue. So sing this with me. I'll sing, and then I want you to sing. Sing open D. Did you sing it? Hope so. Then you're going to sing yellow E. Let me hear you sing yellow E. Okay. Then F sharp red. Let me hear you sing F sharp red. Awesome. Then G is blue. Sing that for me. Now we're switching to open A. Open A. Sing that for me. Awesome. Then yellow B. C sharp red. Then D is blue. Okay, did you do all those? If you didn't, make sure you go back and do them. I really believe that if you can sing it, you can learn how to play it. A very wise music teacher once upon a time, his name was Tony King, and he told me that. He said, you can learn how to play anything that you first learn how to sing. So you learn how to sing it first, and then you transfer that knowledge onto an instrument, like the violin. Okay, so once you're able to play a pizzicato, like we, were, like we were just doing, then you want to play it with your bow. So, a couple reminders. Your grip should look something like that. You're sitting up nice and tall on the front one-third of your chair. You're placing your violin chin rest along your jawline, and your instrument should be pointed off somewhere around, somewhere around maybe 9.30, 10 o'clock. Don't point it forward. Like a lot of musicians, young violinists want to bow down here. Where, hey, you can see your hand, right? So that's why, how, nope. You need to have it off to the side and also parallel to the horizon, which this one is basically right now. In other words, we don't want to sag. Don't let the scroll sag. And let's not pretend that we're hunting for quail with it either. You know, pointed it up towards the sky. It needs to be parallel with the horizon at about 9.30 with our bow grip. And then, <laughs> then we want to create a box. Do you see the box? Here's one side of the box, my bow. And then if you look at my clavicle all the way across, that's another top side of the box. And then my upper arm here is the side. And then my forearm down here is the bottom part of the box. So I'm going to go open yellow, red, blue, and then switch strings to the A string, open, yellow, red, blue. The D major scale. Switch strings. So it's open is D, yellow is E, F sharp is red, G is blue, open A, B is yellow, C sharp is red, and D is blue. That is our mighty D major scale. Okay, I don't know if you uh, know that, but I'm a piano player. <laughs> and I've been playing all these beautiful, hopefully beautiful piano notes down here. So you can also practice the D major scale on the piano. And all of your arpeggios, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So your assignment is to work on this D major scale on the violin. And cellists, it's the same concept for you. You are just using the same color scheme with the same strings and the same fingering strategies, but just simply using your cello and bowing appropriately for that. So uh, if you have any questions, make sure to email me and 
practice, practice, practice. I would recommend hmm, three, three, four, maybe even five times a week if you're really get, getting into it. And the more you practice, the better you'll get. And the better you get, the more fun it will be. Happy practicing.